Um, let's get straight into it. Number 7. Project X-Ray, 1940s. During the Second World War, the United States military wanted to create a novel explosive weapon by utilizing Mexican free-tailed bats. The plan was to blow up Japanese cities and military bases using bombs stuffed with bats that carried small incendiary devices. The devices were like backpacks for the bats. The plan was that the bats, equipped with small incendiary devices, would be released from the bombs. These bombs were actually cages that would open before slamming into the ground, giving the bats enough time to get out of the bombshell. During the day, bats will instinctively go for a dark, isolated spot to roost. Bats would set buildings on fire as they roosted within, thanks to the explosives they carried. The Mexican free-tailed bats were selected for the experiment due to their roosting habits and abundance. But things went wrong when, during testing, a few bats got away and blew up a U.S. military airbase. The main cause for this is that when the incendiary devices set off at the Carlsbad Army Airfield, an accidental fire broke out because some of the bats hid under a fuel tank. The project was eventually shelved because of the unforeseen outcomes during testing and the bats' unpredictability. Not to mention that these bats were known to spread some really nasty diseases. Consequently, the full undertaking was abandoned. Number 6. Gay Bomb Okay, first of all, it's a real thing, and has its own Wikipedia page, you can check it out. The Gay Bomb was a proposal by the US Air Force to develop a non-lethal chemical weapon designed to disrupt enemy soldiers' effectiveness. The purpose of the gas was to release aphrodisiac chemicals that would cause enemy soldiers to become sexually attracted to each other. The intended effect was to distract enemy soldiers from combat, disrupting unit cohesion and effectiveness. These aphrodisiac chemicals would be so intense that the soldiers would go wild. In short, it basically messed with the hormones and mental state. The gas was planned to be made into small cartridges and would be dropped from planes. The cartridges would blast open and the thin gas would spread immediately. The primary targets were the barracks and trenches, and the gas cartridges were planned to be dropped around dawn and evening time when the soldiers would change their shifts, because the soldiers are usually busy at that time. You may say that it was just a concept, but some source suggests that the formula was already there in papers and ready for production. But for some reason, the actual production was never initiated, and the concept was scrapped for some reason. Number 5. The War Elephant Parachute Experiment, 1970s Navigating and operating in dense jungle conditions presented substantial problems to U.S. personnel during the Vietnam War. On several of these terrains, conventional vehicles failed miserably. Elephants, they believed, would be perfect for the task. The original plan called for using elephants to haul supplies and heavy machinery across thick jungle terrains where automobiles couldn't get very far. The issue, though, was how to bring an elephant into the forest from the United States. The decision to airdrop the elephants in the location by parachutes was reached after much research. Specialized, extra-large parachutes that could handle an elephant's weight and size would have to be designed by engineers. The size and weight of elephants would necessitate modifications to heavy-lift aircraft like the C-130 Hercules or comparable versions. Despite being one of the most powerful cargo planes, they were only able to transport a small number of elephants, severely limiting their practicality. As soon as the production began, the researchers began to doubt their abilities in the face of the obstacles. Many things had to be considered, including the development of harness and parachute systems to support the elephants, which ensured a safe and soft landing, modifications to the planes to meet their weight, training of the elephants for their duties, and so on. Even after these, the elephant would have been rendered useless by just one bullet. Taking all of this into account, the project ended in the middle stage. Number 4. Project Pigeon, 1940s Created by the famous behaviorist B.F. Skinner, an internal pigeon served as the missile's navigator in Project Pigeon, which was essentially a guided missile. The pigeon would act as a pilot for the missile by navigating it with its strapped-in beak. In a nutshell, pigeons learned to peck at certain images. The pigeon's pecking position would determine the missile's trajectory, the missile's nose cone contained a screen onto which the target image was projected by a lens system. The missile's nose cone held the pigeons, and the display showed them the target. The pigeon would peck on the display thinking the target is food. By pecking on the display, 
the pigeons were able to change the missile's trajectory and control its flight. Warships and tanks would usually be the intended victims. The missile would be guided to its target by signals generated by each peck. The missile could continuously alter its course in response to the pigeons pecking thanks to this feedback loop. As part of their training, the pigeons were given food as a reward whenever they peeked at the virtual target on the screen. Because of this, it became second nature to them. The next step was to place them inside the missile's nose cone. They guided the missile by doing the same pecking motion on the screen. It was cruel and unnecessary for the region to die out, leading to the project's cancellation and the subsequent installation of an electronic guidance system. Number 3. The Stanford Prison Experiment, 1971 Conducted by psychologist Philip Zimbardo in 1971, the Stanford Prison Experiment aimed to investigate the psychological effects on students through a simple role-play experiment of prisoners and guards. The experiment was scheduled for two weeks, but ended up lasting only six days. The participants were 24 male college students whose roles of prisoners and guards were randomly selected. The guards were given uniforms, sunglasses, and batons. On the other hand, the prisoners were arrested, stripped, and given numbered smocks. The first day went smoothly under the supervision of the professor, but problems started after the second day, when the guards were given freedom. The guards quickly exhibited abusive behaviors. The prisoners experienced severe emotional distress and passivity. The students took the experiment so seriously, they were no longer behaving like they were classmates. Professor Zimbardo became too involved in his role to objectively evaluate and stop the experiment. By the way, Philip Zimbardo himself took on the role of the prison superintendent, which contributed to the intensity and realism of the experiment. Number 2. The Human Radiation Experiments From the 1940s through the 1960s, the United States government ran what was known as the Human Radiation Experiment. Understanding how radioactive chemicals penetrated the tissue known as the placenta into the fetus was the main focus of the radiation impacts on human investigation. Indeed, a human fetus is in the making. This study's intended participants were pregnant women. Women who were expecting a child were enrolled in the study without being completely informed about its purpose. In addition, the hazards associated came with a heavy price tag. To mislead the public, these women were given vitamin drinks that actually contained radioactive iron. This study set out to examine the effects of radioactive iron on fetal development and to watch how the metal moved from the mother to the baby, to the point that the unborn child becomes a mutant, perhaps. In some cases, the fetus developed cancer even before it was born. People lost faith in government and healthcare organizations after learning about these tests, which caused a huge uproar. The legality of the experiment was in a gray zone, so the government took a secret exit to avoid any allegations. Number 1. Project Acoustic Kitty, 1960s The project was carried out in the 1960s, during the height of the Cold War. Quickly developing new forms of surveillance technology was a top priority for the CIA. The CIA planned to surgically implant advanced listening devices in house cats so they could use them as clandestine surveillance equipment. As part of the study, veterinarians had to insert electronic surveillance equipment into the bodies of cats through complex surgeries. The whole arrangement was contained within the cat itself, thanks to a tiny battery pack that powered the listening equipment. The CIA thought cats would be perfect eavesdroppers since they were typical household pets, could move stealthily in different settings, and could enter critical areas undetected. At least that was the plan. In the first run of Project Acoustic Kitty, the CIA let a cat loose in a park so it could listen in on a couple having a chat while they sat on a bench. A taxi plowed over the free cat almost immediately after it rushed across the highway. After the incident, the CIA or any either intelligence organization was very skeptical about using animals for surveillance. 